Hi, my name is Adora Svitok and I'm here at the Colorado Convention Center in Denver, Colorado for ISTE 2010, the International Society for Technology and Education. I'm here with Jim Margraf, founder of LiveScribe. So uh, tell me all about what does the pen do? Hi, thank you, thank you. Adora, we've created a new type of computing platform. With the LiveScribe smart pen, anything you capture, you write, you hear, you speak, will be able to be accessed and shared forever. So anything you write on paper will be recorded. If you're recording, you're writing notes when you're in a, a lecture or in a meeting, you can record simultaneously the audio. You can go back then and touch your notes on paper and hear what was recorded at the time you wrote those notes. Further, when you then dock your pen, you can move your ink and audio to your desktop, your Mac or PC, where you can see it, you can search it by typing in a word, find it, share it, and play it back forever. So what's the technology behind the pen? So what, what happens is, the pen is, the, the paper as you see, paper is printed with very small micro dots. And uh, these can be printed, by the way, on a laser printer at no cost. So we let people that have a smart pen download a file that they can then print on, an, on a laser jet printer, print their own paper with their record and playback controls on it at no fee. But the way it works is as the pen writes on paper, there's a camera in the tip of the pen it sees the dots as you're writing on paper. So when I write, hello. Right now, the camera's looking down and it's seeing a series of dots. I can show you actually. Imagine a grid, if you will. And imagine there's a dot placed either slightly north, south, east, or west of a virtual grid. And each dot is 0.3 millimeters apart. And the camera, at any given time, it sees an array of six by six dots which are then 1.8 by 1.8 millimeter square. That camera then, by tracking the dots, it doesn't see the ink from the pen tip, it sees the dots and it calculates where the pen tip is. And in doing so, when I write, it's capturing and it's doing a, a image, a photograph of these dots 75 times a second, 75 hertz. And it's determining the tip of the pen, so we call it a dot positioning system. And that allows us to capture and recreate digital ink. Wow, so I would assume that it takes a background in math or science. What is your background? My background is in engineering, electrical engineering, computer science. And actually, we found this technology from a company in Sweden from whom we licensed it. But I brought it in, and they had been creating something called a digital pen. Digital pen's been around for years. What it does is it captures ink. What we did is said, let's make this pen be a computer. So now I can capture ink and audio but I can address all four modalities of learning, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And so this has a speaker, a microphone, a display, it records audio, and it allows you to connect it via USB to a desktop and upload your information and access it. Speaking of learning, what do you see as some of the practical applications of the pen in the classroom? Well, what happens, you two ways to look at this. One is from the teacher's perspective and the other is the students. Teachers right now are finding a way to use this uh, and, and it's a technique we call pen casting. So a teacher can sit with their paper, either in their home or in the classroom, and they can sketch out, for instance, a quadratic equation, say ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And what they'll do is they'll touch record, begin recording, and explain. They'll say, to solve this, what you do is create a binomial of the form ax plus b um, times cx plus d, and you have to set this equal to zero. So they'll process, they'll, they'll explain it, and at the end of it, it continues recording. So when they stop, first of all, they can go back, and I'll plug in an external speaker since it's loud here. But if I touch this right now, so it plays back the audio from any point exactly when I touch it, okay? And I can hear that. Now what the teacher will do is the teacher will dock this and move this ink and audio description to, our, to their desktop and then move it to our web. They'll post it as a pen cast where anyone in the world can see what they've taught, can watch it and play it without any special software. Those students have access to that teacher's best method of teaching a topic. So that's a teacher's view, they pen cast. The student, on the other hand, can sit in the classroom when they're taking notes, watching and listening to a teacher, they're capturing their notes and audio, they can go back and listen to what that teacher said over and over again. So by allowing a teacher to create a pen cast or a student to capture the teacher's words or audio directly for themselves and touch their own notes, we have the benefit of a teacher in your pocket for the student, and the student has an ability to reach out and support students, a teacher can support the student's needs.
Yes, and I could definitely see, you know, a, a, as a student being able to write and capture audio and then go back to that. Now, are you worried at all that some students may use this as an excuse to perhaps fall asleep on their desk? Well, if they do, at least they'll have the benefit of being able to go back after the fact and know that they have captured. As a college student, there are those moments when your pen veers down the page, when your hand falls over and you realize, oh no, I fell asleep. So that can happen. So, very true. Good benefit, uh, just in case somehow uh, that you miss part of the lecture, then you can go back and watch it. Capture. There's another thing, I, as I described this before as a computer, so as a computer I said, gee, I'd like to do what you do with a computer that allows a user to navigate to an application, then launch the application. But how do you do that on a blank piece of paper? Where's your menu system? How do you navigate? So we created the idea of allowing you to navigate in the same way you do with a, a mobile phone where you have a rocker panel and you can navigate up, down, left, and right. So what we did is we pre-printed a, a spot on this where there's a nav, we call a nav plus, and I can tap this and navigate with a visual menu on my pen up, down, left, and right. So let's watch what happens. I can use this by tapping, or I can draw it myself. So if I draw, I'll plug this in again, it's noisy here. <clears throat> I'm gonna draw a plus sign and tap it. Now I have a main menu. I can navigate through this by touching this plus sign to a folder of applications or into some apps that are already preloaded like these. So here's a demonstration of a translator. Let's navigate to the right. It says Spanish. It tells me to write something. Let's write um, one, O-N-E. It recognizes it, converts it to Spanish and speaks it. If I write one coffee, I can write in cursive or printing and I'll write please. Now notice what happens if I touch these again. In fact, let's go back and let's now change to another language. Let's go Mandarin. And notice the resolution of this. Uh, you can see full iconographic characters in kanji, katakana, hiragana, or I could even go to Arabic. And we can see this in another language. So that's one vehicle. Last one I can show you that's fun. I can touch this twice. I'll write the word piano. And this is a lot of fun. It prompts me to draw an instrument on my paper. So let's draw, in this case, a piano. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll go to the top, the bottom, put an I down, and an R. So what do you think I built? Should we play it? Yes. In fact, let's also, let's add in the sharp keys. And the, so we'll, we'll put in C sharp, D sharp, whoops, F sharp, G sharp. So now I've built a full keyboard. I could even change instruments. In a fiddle, if I slide in and out of C-sharp, watch. I could even kick off a rhythm track. I can play around with it. Stop. Okay. I can see applications on this, not just for teachers and students, but also for uh, very technologically advanced DJs out there <laughs> and people traveling in uh, foreign countries. <laughs> you have a lot of fun with this, couldn't you? Yes, the applications thank keep on expanding. Well, thank you so very much for thank talking you, with Adora. me. Thank you, Adora. Pleasure to speak with you. Thank, thank you. you. From the Colorado Convention Center, I'm Adora Sweetalk.